What's going on YouTube? Back with another video and today I want to talk about the components that I'm going to put on my dream build for the 2021 chisel. I have already previewed the frame to you guys. I've showed that off. And so now I want to show you all of the components that I have already purchased. The only thing that is missing today will be the actual fork. And I know that is the major piece of the bike, but right now I just can't financially afford the fork. And so uh, I have to wait that one have to wait that one out but uh, I do want to go with a Fox transfer uh, I'm sorry uh, a Fox factory uh, 32 step cast fork for this bike so eventually I'll be able to uh, afford it <laughs> I hope and um, hopefully in the next month or maybe two depends on how things go I'll be able to get the fork and start the actual build uh, in the meantime I want to show you all of the other components that I bought for the bike and what I'm putting on it one of the reasons why I want to do this is to show you uh, pretty much what I'm going with, what I think are, you know, pretty much top performing components uh, for the bike that I want to build. But I also want to show you uh, how expensive a bike build can be and exactly what type of parts you may need that you probably didn't even think of if you're thinking about building your own bike from scratch or from the frame up. And so uh, with that being said, I'm going to start off with the group sets. Uh, I went with the Shimano XT group set and the reason why I did that is because with the stump jumper I had the Shimano SLX group set in the past I have ridden SRAM uh, GX and NX and the Shimano SLX blew me away uh, with the performance of those components and so I took it a notch up went with the XT components and so I think this is going to be an amazing quality bike with those components uh, with that being said we can start off with the Shimano XT brakes. Um, these are the newest versions, the M8100s. Man, these things just look awesome. <laughs> just the quality, the build on them. I mean, just the, the actual uh, details, you know, on these particular um, brakes. And of course it comes with all of the wiring and all of the components that you need to install. I actually kind of did a test just to kind of see um, how it would fit on the front and rear of the frame with the rotors that I have and it fit perfectly I did have to buy um, an adapter which is this one for the chisel uh, so if you have a 21 uh, chisel frame and I have a 180 millimeter rotor in the front 160 in the back the 160 fits fine with these brakes, but if you have a 180, you're going to need this adapter to make it fit. And it is called the disc brake mount adapter. It is uh, for the front, 180 millimeter, and the model number is SM-MA. And uh, it is a P slash P2. And um, yeah, this is this is what you're going to need in order to put this, this brake system uh, on the front. And so yeah, very high quality. Uh, I can only imagine how this thing can stop, the stopping power that it's going to provide. Probably an overkill, probably won't even need it, because uh, the SLX actually does a great job by itself, so I really don't think I would even need anything more powerful than that. But for the price point, um, I got these, I think, 20% off, brand new, and um, for the price point, it was just worth spending the extra, I think, I think it was like maybe twenty dollars per break to go ahead and just upgrade from the SLX to the uh, to the XT so I didn't mind spending the money you know that little bit of money for uh, for an upgraded break and so uh, that is the first component this box is the actual rear brake so pretty much the same thing now we have our crank set. So with the cranks, uh, I currently have the race face effect on the stump jumper. It came with, I believe, a 175 millimeter crank. And that particular crank arm is a little bit too long for me. I'm having not a lot of pedal strikes, but a few here and there. So uh, I wanted to shorten the crank arm a little bit. If 175 is a little bit too long for me, I went with the 165 with this Shimano XT crank set and yeah there are a lot of cranks I could have went with but to be honest um, I just wanted to keep it all in the same group set and 
these look nice though. Honestly, I was I was very very uh, impressed with the craftsmanship of this particular crank. And again, it is the XT, the model number for this one. I think it's the M800, M8100 as well. Yeah, 165 millimeter. Yeah, I think all of the XTs are going to be the M8100s, the newer ones. It actually even has a um, you can't really see it probably in the camera, but it has a protective film on the crank arm as well to help protect it from getting scratched up. Um, comes with both cranks in there. Now with this, I did actually have to buy a tool uh, to uh, fit the bottom bracket in once all of that gets attached. I'll kind of go over that in just a second. Um, but that tool is something that you're going to need if you decide to go with this particular uh, model of crank arms because <clears throat> you have to get a particular bottom bracket to match and to fit. This is the Shimano bottom bracket, the MT800. Um, the bottom bracket, I don't really want to pull all of this out because it's like really, really greasy. Um, I took it open before just to check the components in it. Everything is in there, but it is like an all black bottom bracket. Uh, you will need this particular tool in order to uh, apply or put this on. And I went with the Park Tool BBT 59.2. That is the BBT 59.2. And what this is, is it will actually fit on the bottom bracket and you can put a hex wrench on the back and tighten it using this particular tool. So this is definitely a good tool to have with those particular Shimano bottom brackets. Next up, we have the Shimano XT. Oh, this is the shift lever. Okay, so this is the M8100 um, shifter. Now, here's the interesting thing about this particular shifter. With the XT shifter, this particular shifter, and I did get the one that actually, I didn't get the, the I think it's called the iTech one that actually is supposed to fit, you know, uh, with your brake. Uh, I didn't want to get that one because I wanted more flexibility on where I could actually post this on the handlebar. And so uh, this is the XT one. I got the one that actually just has the actual um, adjustable band to, to fit it on the handlebar. Um, with this particular shifter, it's supposed to downshift. You can shift two gears with just one click. And it's supposed to only be on the XT and the XTR shifter. But my stump jumper has an XLX shifter and I can do the same thing with that shifter. I don't know if maybe, I, I don't know why. From my understanding, the SLX is not supposed to be able to shift, downshift two gears, but mine does. So I don't know if it's a fluke or maybe I just got one that was labeled wrong or whatever the case may be, but uh, I assure you that I can shift two gears with just a click of um, the shifter. So, but I got that one for the, for, uh, for the chisel as well. This particular item, this is the derailleur now. If you notice on this box, it does not say XT, it says XTR. Okay, let me tell you kind of like the story of, of how this happened. This derailleur is a very expensive derailleur. This is probably one of the components that I did not want to pay this much money for out of any other component. Everything else I pretty much knew, the, pretty, the price range and things of that nature. I did not plan on spending this much money for a derailleur. But what ended up happening is um, <clears throat> all of the short cage derailleurs were sold out pretty much on every website. So um, the XT derailleur, you could not find in a GS or the short cage. But when doing the research with the uh, XT cassette, and the XT chain, and just all of the components that I actually bought for this bike, it was recommended to get the short cage XTR more than any other derailleur, just by some of the research and, and comments and things that I read, even by um, some of the pros. Because I, I read a couple of articles where even some of the pro riders were saying, hey, there really isn't that much of a difference between the XT and the SLX brakes, either one will be fine. It's not that much difference between the XT cassette and the SLX cassette. Either one is going to be fine. It's just saving a, you know, a few grams here and there. Um, but with the derailleur, 
they were saying that there was a difference between this particular derailleur and the others. And so because I could not find the XT that I needed, um, I did see some SLX derailleurs, but uh, it really I really needed the XT or or higher. And so I went with the higher model because um, I couldn't find the other one, the XT in my uh, in the short cage size. So this bad boy, I have not even taken out yet. I, it's it's just, it's an amazing derailleur. First off, it's a lot bigger than I thought it would be, but um, you you can tell this thing is this thing is high tech right here. And so uh, the way they even seal it and wrap it. You know, all the other like Shimano components, except for the cassettes, do not come wrapped like this. Uh, but this thing is like sealed tight. And uh, yeah, all I can say is I'm excited to put this thing on, but uh, it's, it's definitely a high-end, nice uh, derailleur. So I got went with the XTR derailleur, and that's the only component that I went XTR with. Uh, did not go with any SLX components. I was debating between the SLX cassette and the XT, but I went up, ended up finding the XT cassette at a lot cheaper price, slightly used. So I ended up buying that one and I'm going to send the SLX cassette back. I uh, went with the SL, I'm sorry, I went with the Shimano XT chain. This is the CN-M8100. This is the 12 speed 126 link um, high end chain. Uh, so as you can see, I'm not I'm not messing around with like cheap components here. I'm going with, you know, what I think is going to be best for this build. Um, also doing something a little bit different, stepping out of the box. I went with the Absolute Black Oval chain ring, um, and this goes with the Shimano 12 speed. If you end up deciding to go oval or trying it or, or buying this, you need to make sure that you get the one that fits your bike. So they have some that are designed for SRAM. They have some that are designed for Shimano. And so just make sure you get the right one, um, you know, that, that fits your uh, group set. Um, I also went with, okay, talking about, you know, the cassettes and putting on the cassettes and making sure you're tightening correctly. Uh, I went with a lock ring tool. Uh, this has the guide pin, but I really don't need the guide pin, but it still works pretty much the same. This model number is the TL-LR15. And this particular item um, definitely helps you uh, tighten the, uh, the cassette onto the hub. And so you will need one of these with or without the, uh, the guide pin. Um, also went with, oh, when it comes to the seat post. Uh, am I done with everything else? Just kind of want to talk about, yeah. Uh, when it comes to the seat post, went with the Wolf Tooth. This is the remote light action 22. This has the handlebar clamp on it. Um, when it comes to your uh, seat post, if you're, if you're going to go with a dropper post, um, especially a Fox factory transfer dropper, everyone recommends the Wolf Tooth light action remote. So, uh, I mean, if you look at all the reviews, this is the number one remote to go with that particular dropper post. So, of course, I had to go with that one. And then um, for the actual dropper post I had to go with the bad boy of course you already know what this is the fox transfer now here's the thing of course they have all of these in all kind of different sizes the first dropper post that i ever bought which i still rec highly recommend the bike yoke revive was 125 um, millimeter and that's really all i needed I'm just going to be honest with you. I don't really, I would say max 150 millimeter, but for what I do and how I ride, I really don't need more than 125, 150 max. So I went with the 125 because that's what I had before and it was plenty enough room for me. But of course, some people will argue that, but, um, and I was actually even able to get this for 12% off brand new fact for, uh, on sale. So yeah, and it's lucky to even ever get anything relating to a Fox dropper or Fox fork on sale, unless it's an older model, but this is the 2021 transfer dropper that I got for like 12% off. So kind of got a little bit of a deal with that. Not much, but at least it's something. Um, next up, I went with the Race Face Atlas 35 millimeter um, 
This colorway is called the Cash Money colorway. Uh, it's sold out pretty quickly. I was able to luck up and get it from a place that only had three left. I love this gold color. Um, I like these when they first came out. I remember when they first came out and I wanted one back when I had a GT Avalanche. But uh, at the time, I just I just didn't pull the trigger on it, but I'm glad I got it now. I know a lot of people are thinking, why would you want to put a 35 millimeter um, handlebar on my new build? But hey, I just really, really fell in love with this colorway and it actually matches the Fox transfer dropper perfectly. Uh, I mean, perfectly. This gold is like a, per it's almost the exact same color. Um, I thought it was going to be off a little bit, but it matches perfectly. Um, I did cut the handlebar already. Uh, I think it was, I forgot what the millimeter was when it came. I want to say it was 800 and I got it down to 780. I'm going to keep it at 780 for now. You also notice I went with, um, to start, I bought a few handlebars, uh, grips. And so um, I went with the PNC Lone Grips, very, very comfortable grips. Um, I went with you know this colorway and also have the uh, more sandy colorway as well, but I just like the, the grip. It's very, very sticky, very comfortable as well. Um, had, also had to go with the Race Face Stem. Uh, this is the Turbine Stem. I went with a, this is 35 millimeter as well. I went with a 70, Wait, is it 70 millimeter? Yeah, in length. And that is because this is a uh, cross country bike. And so because of that, um, I will uh, need a little bit longer of a stem. So that's the one that I went with. And I believe it's gonna work perfectly fine on there. So, so yeah, not too bad, but I mean, it's a basic stem. Didn't want to get anything too crazy with that. We're going to go to the pedals. I went with the Stamp 7 Crank Brothers uh, pedals, aluminum pedals. These are a size small. I never had the Stamp 7s before, but I had the Stamp 3s in a size large, and they were too large for me. So I trickled down to the smaller ones. This particular colorway, this green colorway, matches the bike perfectly. Uh, I was looking for an orange for a while, but I cannot find the orange colorway. It's sold out everywhere. So uh, I had went with the green for these and you know, I can always switch out pedals, but these are what I'm gonna go with at first. I got my race face crank boots as always. Um, you know what? I need to see if those fit. Well, they do fit, but it is a little tight. What I'm gonna have to do is just kind of make that hole a tad bit bigger. But I can work on that. That shouldn't be a uh, shouldn't be too much of a problem I'm trying to get that in there. But but we'll see. But for the most part, yeah, it's a it's a fit. All right. Next up, we have oh, this is what's called a star nut setter. It's made by Pedro's. Uh, kind of heavy for its size, but it's a tool that pretty much uh, sets the the nut inside of the fork whenever I buy my fork. So I needed this tool once the uh, actual, once I'm able to afford the fork, uh, I'm gonna need that later on to install that. This is um, the Shimano sprocket remover. Uh, this is gonna come in handy as well uh, later on down the line. So I know I'm gonna need one of these. This thing right here is expensive. This thing is like almost $70. But if you order it overseas, um, I think I got it from a company in England. Took almost a month to come here, but I only paid like 45 bucks compared to like 70 or 75 or whatever it goes for um, for it. But it's the multi-speed sprocket remover, uh, 10 speed to 12 speed. It's the model number is the TL-SR24. So that comes in handy. I bought some extra uh, Jaguar cable kit for the dropper post uh, because the dropper post does not come with the wiring, which I do not understand that. It does come with, um, the actual uh, tool that you'll need to, the, the housing, but it does not come with the actual um, cable, which I think is just absolutely crazy. But anyway, moving on. Um, also had to go with the headset spacers. Um, you know, once the fork comes in, that's gonna go on that. I actually have the cap uh, as well for the, uh, top tube of the fork 
a um, couple of gold <laughs> um, caps for the uh, tire stem. Uh, went with the Maxxis Recon 29 by 2.4 uh, skin wall tires, which I think are going to look great on this particular bike. Um, heard a lot of great things about the Recons. I've never owned a pair, but I think that these are going to be great for uh, XC. And I didn't want to go too wide or too big, so I think that the, the 2.4s are going to be the perfect size that I that I want and need. Um, also went with the Continental uh, tubes. Uh, these particular tubes uh, go all the way up to 29 by 2.5, so 2.4 should fit fine. Um, also went with the ride wrap again, as I did the stump jumper. I've already put that on the bike, so it's already installed on the frame. And then I've already showed this off, but I'll show it again. <clears throat> Went with the uh, this particular um, wheel set. Uh, this came off a 2021 Specialized Evo uh, bike that a guy was selling on eBay. He gave me a really good deal on this wheel set. It's brand new, it's never been used. He upgraded the carbon wheels immediately when he bought the bike. So I told him I was doing a build and it, it, it pretty much had the hubs and the rotors already on it. So this particular wheel right here is tubeless ready. And I mean this rim, and so um, it's, it's just a starter for me. I think this would be a great starter rim, um, especially that it's not even been used and it's actually a specialized uh, brand so it meets all those specifications of specialized and so I think it'll be a good starter rim for now uh, I did put a um, Cassette guard I did put that on behind the cassette uh, just for the cassettes protection it Took me forever to find the right size for this thing These are harder to find than I thought you would think that you could just go online and buy one of these things But uh, Amazon sells a lot of different kinds, but it's not the right one if you want one of these to fit most specialized bikes with 11 and 12 speed cassettes. The model number of this plastic thing is H-001-215. And I got one, the same one on my stump jumper, but uh, luckily a guy on eBay was selling it, but it's still hard to find these things in, in the right size on there. So, but it fits mine, uh, fits mine perfectly. Uh, this is again, the Shimano XT 12 speed cassette, not the SLX. And so, um, that's what I'm going with uh, for the, for that. And then the rotors in the back, again, these are 160 millimeter in the back and it's gonna be 180 in the front. And these are Shimano, uh, the model number of these are the SM-RT64-S. I will upgrade these rotors once these start to wear down or need upgrading, but for now, since they're brand new, never used, I'm just gonna use these until they wear out and then I'll upgrade from that point on and then the hubs are Shimano as well they have the holotech and they are um, all ready to go for the 12 speed uh, group set so yeah that is about it and I know that is a lot of components that's a lot of stuff and so just kind of wanted to show you guys what it all entails when you buy all of these components for a bike it's a lot of stuff it's a lot of money it's a lot of work it's a lot of research it's a lot of wheeling and dealing, trying to find coupons, trying to find sales. But again, I really do believe that because it is the holidays that you're going to get the best deals around this time. If you can just find bike parts, uh, if you can find the bike parts, usually they're having sales right now. So Thanksgiving or, or, or around November is the best time to start buying components uh, for your bike to try to find those sales anywhere from 10 to 20 percent off. Most of the group set stuff, all of the XT stuff, I got 20% off. All of the other stuff, I've gotten at least 10% off. So, I mean, it may just be tax, but, you know, when you start looking at a, you know, $350 dropper post, 10% is still $35 off, you know, and it was free shipping with that. So, it just depends on, you know, what you're looking for, but you can get some deals around the November time. Uh, as for me, I don't know exactly when I'm going to start this build. I may actually do it in pieces. I may start with the rear, then do a video on, you know, um, 
the, the, the actual group set. Then I may do the final video once I get a fork. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do that yet. Um, I'm actually trying to buy a, a house. And so because of that, um, you know, finances right now are gonna be tight and I can't really spend any more money on a, for the fork right now. Um, and I might even have to sell the stump jumper, to be honest with you. Uh, I don't want to, but uh, for the down payment of the house, you know, I have to meet those responsibilities. And so the stump jumper may have to go for now. I may buy a bike, another trail bike later on down the line. But uh, just because of, you know, the, the down payment, I may have to actually sell that bike. I've already put too much time, money, and research in the build. So I'm actually keeping the chisel. Um, but the stump jumper, you know, I, I may have to part ways with. Um, I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to ask for it as of yet. I've only ridden that bike maybe a total of six or seven times. There's not one scratch on the bike. Uh, it's in excellent condition. That colorway sold out almost immediately when they dropped it, that acid mint. So I know what the bike is worth. I know how quickly it sold out. And I know how hard it is to even get a stump jumper in these days anyway, in this day and time. So I'm just let you know if I do decide to sell it, it's not going to be a low ball or some type of really cheap price for it. I, I know what I have on my hands. And so, um, but I'll, I'll see how that goes. But anyway, until the next video, um, I will try to put a link to the description on every item that I just went over, which is going to take a lot of time. So if you could, please like this video and subscribe. But there will be a link in the description to every single item that I went over. And so, uh, Anyway, I don't know if this is going to be the last video before Christmas. It may or may not be, but if it is, I wish all of you a Merry Christmas. Be safe out there. Enjoy time with your family and friends, and I'll catch you on the next video. Peace.